let me just begin by saying what a privilege it's been for me um, mm -hmm. to not just me but to work with Lynn Jandel and um, all of you who participated in any of our meetings know the spirit and the life that he brought to those meetings and so it's really um, the success of this coalition is due in large measure um, to his leadership and I want to acknowledge that and thank him for that. So um, the only introductions that I think we're lacking, um, we do have representatives from the Michigan Youth Opportunity Initiatives and um, it's so important that we include our youth in these meetings. Um, that's really been something over the last, I would say, decade that I have recognized, not just the Department of Human Services, but all of us stakeholders and all of us, I acknowledge here today, our stakeholders. We know that youth need to be at the table and they're here today. Brittany Totten, am I saying that right, Brittany? Stand up. No, the little wave doesn't work. You stand right up, hon. Okay. And Demika Merriweather. So we, we really thank you both for being here today, for being at previous meetings. And again, um, this is about youth and we need to include them. And that, that both Brittany and Demika are here today is important. And you wouldn't have been here 10 years ago. That alone is a huge accomplishment and it shows a tremendous piece of progress that's not included in the key findings, but that we as stakeholders need to recognize. We include and we listen to our young people. So thank you. Um, okay, so over the course of the last three years, this coalition has come together. And in September of 2011, we came together and we said, in Michigan, we all know that like nationally, we have an overrepresentation of minority in our foster care system. We said in that room, we're all stakeholders and we've all experienced this anecdotally and we all want to solve the problem. But as a coalition, what do we need? And resoundingly, we agreed we need data. And we were committed as a coalition to come up with data because Justice Cor or M Director Corrigan knows, and I'm going to recognize Steve Yeager again as, as uh, in, in his role for DHS, data drives success. And we were given that sort of mantra from DHS. And so I, I'm really excited that we now have the data that we need on this issue of the overrepresentation of minority in our foster care system. We don't yet have the data on the juvenile justice side, but we've got the tools in place to create that snapshot, to create that data on the juvenile justice side as well. So I, I do want to recognize the leadership of DHS the data unit of DHS. I want to recognize the leadership of Director Corrigan in really placing this issue, not just of data generally, but that we need data on the overrepresentation of minority <coughs> youth in the foster care system and in the juvenile justice system if we are going to fix the problem in Michigan. So again, I, I recognize and I thank DHS for placing that as a priority. This collaboration involves many stakeholders. Every one of you are a stakeholder or you would not be here today. I thank the media for becoming a stakeholder in this issue. Particularly, I do want to acknowledge face Casey Family Programs. Casey has been with Michigan on this issue from the get-go. They've partnered with Michigan on many other issues relating to foster care youth. And they, they certainly provided the initial funding on this issue. But more than that, their steadfast commitment to Michigan on foster care youth has been with us. And uh, again, I really want to acknowledge Casey 
I also want to express, where did she go? I'm sorry, I looked on the other. I want to express my gratitude to Michigan State uh, and to the Institute of Public Policy um, for hosting us today, but also for your commitment to this project. And it's not just the data that we need, but it's also the study of results by a reputable academic program, because that's what in today's world, legislators, government entities, that's what drives their decisions. And so we appreciate your commitment to this. This matters, this issue of the overrepresentation matters to all of us stakeholders and it matters to our communities because for decades, We've anecdotally known, we've anecdotally seen this issue, and now the data trend that we have captured with this data that we'll see this afternoon can drive policy decisions within our state. As one example, as simply one example that's captured in those key recommendations, which I really invite you to study, this issue manifests itself in a very tangible way. Consider this key finding. African American children in our foster care, that's Michigan's, our foster care system, African American ch children are twice as likely to age out of the foster care system than our non-minority children. That's a very simple key finding. That's problematic because if an African-American child is twice as likely to age out of the foster care system than a non-minority child, the question is, what is the prospect for success for that child? Casey Family Programs projects for us that every youth who ages out of the child welfare system, the community pays $300,000 in social costs over the course of his or her lifetime. But there's more important social costs that we stakeholders also consider. And those social costs are that for the first year of leaving, child, of leaving foster care, 22 to 55% of our foster care youth are unemployed. 31 to 42 percent have been arrested and 18 to 26 percent have been incarcerated. Those are social costs and those are the kinds of statistics that concern us. So the human cost of poor outcomes poor outcomes for our young people that age out of foster care are tremendous. And that's the kind of results that we want our policy decisions to change, that we want this data to drive. And that's really why we as stakeholders come together. We continue to work on programs, on policies, on legislative change that can help our young people. When our legislature changed the age at which foster care youth could stay in the system, when, when our legislature said a young person can remain in our foster care system until age 21, like the federal government allows, instead of age 18, that made a huge difference to the possibilities we could provide for our young people. That one legislative change created tremendous opportunities for our young people. And that legislative change was driven by a huge group of stakeholders that came together and said, we have too many people aging out of foster care at age 18. So again, it's this kind of data that drives change. And I'm really, really excited about the data that we're gonna to see today. I'm really excited about what's going on in Saginaw County. Again, the, the data that was able to capture a picture 
so that they could, they, Saginaw County, could implement change. So again, I thank all of you for your role. We all come from a different perspective to this issue. The perspective that I have is different from the perspective that you have. I play a different role in this issue, but that doesn't make it, that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't mean that I have any greater insight on this issue than you do. I just impact a young person within the system in a different way. We're all here together on the same mission, and we are making tremendous progress. The legislative change that I told you about, I think is one thing. The fact we have foster care youth here is another great example of progress that we're making, and we're doing this together. I can tell you, when I was a young judge in Wayne County, so I'm talking about like 2000, not that I was young in years, I mean that I was young in my judicial career. So I had been a judge for about a year or so. And I had a child welfare case that came into the system. So that the child welfare case came into the system by the fact that a young person had been left in a daycare center after the daycare center had closed. Daycare center had closed at 6 p.m. and the child had been left at the daycare center because mom didn't get to the daycare center by the time the daycare center had closed. So the daycare center called the police and said that the mom had abandoned the child and the child then was taken into police custody and a Child Protective Services case was opened and that child then became part of the child welfare system. Now that's how that child found their way into the Child Protective Services system. That was back in 2000. I'm very confident that that would not happen today. And even back then, I sort of wondered when I was looking at that case and how that case originated, if that would have happened in all other places throughout the county in which I sat as a judge, it concerned me that that's the way that that case originated. I'm very confident today that because points of entry into the child welfare system is now something that DHS is very focused on, that preventative measures in homes is something that DHS is very focused on, that, that case would never originate today. So again, we, we have made tremendous progress. We continue to make progress. And, and the point that we all are stakeholders and we all do our share in different, in different ways, and we all effectuate change in different ways, but it all happens together it is really the point that I want to leave you with. I've seen great change over the years that I've been involved in foster care, and I've seen great momentum come together. And so I thank you for being here. I'm really excited to hear this data. I've actually heard it, so <laughs> I'm excited for you to hear it. <laughs> I know that many of you have heard it because you've been to the meetings, but um, I think that that key findings um, presentation, that pamphlet, um, the, the final version of it, again, uh, a lot of work has gone into refining the presentation of it, really um, making it a, a document that you can take away that has value in the way that it's presented. Um, and I thank those that have worked on making it, um, you know, that final editing it down to a document that really has takeaway value, as I like to say. I think it's a great document, and, and I'm, I'm really proud of the way that it, it is something that I think really has value right now. So I really invite you to study it, use it, and I, I think it's a great final piece of work for this coalition. Um, so I'm now going to turn this over to that's what I'm not sure. Lynn, I'm going to turn it over to Lynn. <laughs> Thank you.